The podcast you are listening to of Holmberg's Morning Sickness is brought to you by my friends at Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meet, mesquite, repeat. Trust me on this one. You've had barbecue before, but you haven't had it this good. Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Eric'sFamilyBBQ.com. When was the last time you had really good Texas-style barbecue? Eric's Family Barbecue, the way it's supposed to taste. Always delicious, never rushed, and prepared to perfection. Eric's Family Barbecue uses only 100% fresh meat, slowly smoked over mesquite wood until it's juicy and delicious. We all know their brisket is the best, but have you tried their pulled pork, pork ribs, or rib tips? Amazing, and their sides are all house-made. Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meat, mesquite, repeat. Make the trip. You won't be so. Sorry, go to ericsfamilybbq.com for more information. Holmberg's morning sickness. You've been deceived by an agent of Satan himself. He's evil. Sitting right here. Come on. No, no, he's not. He's not evil. He's just a bit rude. Go ahead. Oh, we need it. God. <laughs> that sounds kind of like a dog. I would need taste that one of the way. <laughs> I can work on it. Yeah. Try it again. <laughs> I need some sort of, if this is going to work, and I know we're doing this live now. Hi, everybody. <laughs> but if this is going to work, I need some sort of cue so I don't throw out a slur or a cuss word to start the entire oh, show. it's not going to work. <laughs> it ain't going to work. I got no button. I got nothing. Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's the morning sickness. My name's John Holmberg. How are you? There's uh, Brady, I think. Brett. <laughs> yep. And uh, Dick Toledo somewhere. They're <laughs> apparitions <laughs> to me. Uh, you can stop now. That's enough. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so I'm broadcasting live from my uh, couch in the game room that I've been isolated in since last Wednesday evening. Is it Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday night. And uh, off we ran to, uh, to, the, to the COVID world. And I have to sit now because as I've discovered, the love for, uh, for us as individuals through our company uh, stems only so far as how much we provide them financially. Because the second I had COVID, it wasn't about how I was physically or uh, medically, it was about how far they could shove a microphone down my throat before a ventilator got there. That's basically (laughs) what happened. Within an hour of me saying I had COVID, there were people at my door dropping off uh, equipment to see if we could get me to broadcast from home. So far, that's okay. But the good news is, boys, is that yesterday's test came back negative. This uh, got knocked out cold. Silly fast. So uh, I, I feel fine. I, I had one bad night, Thursday night to Friday night, Friday morning. And the only thing that was bad about it was I couldn't stay conscious. I, I was just dead. Like the worst uh, symptom this entire thing gave me was the best sleep of my life. But Smell I couldn't come taste? out. Of, uh, smell is still gone. Taste, taste went away for 45 minutes to an hour the first night and then came back. So it was nothing to that. But, the, yeah, the smell thing is, is just noticeably strange. I put my, my nose up against everything, trying to figure out if I can get anything, trying to fool myself into thinking I can smell. And uh, it, there's none of that. So it's weird. That's the, that is the weirdest sensation ever. My body kind of protects me from danger, too, because uh, Lysol, I sprayed a ton of Lysol. That's all I do. And uh, if it's too heavy, you're not supposed to breathe that. I've done it many times. So you're not supposed to breathe it. And it's like my, my face and brain know not to let me inhale at that point. You're huffing you, Lysol. <laughs> I would love to huff Lysol. That would be great. But I can spray it and walk right through it like there's nothing. But uh, there's been, you know, if there was a fire or whatever, my other senses are, I don't know how it works. I'm hyper aware that I can't smell. Hyper aware. Even when I forget, my body doesn't. It's really strange. I talked to a friend of ours, Thomas Wells, the Scotsman, and he got it, uh, COVID, a while ago. He hasn't had a uh, smell or taste for eight weeks. Yeah. Which is just brutal. So it's weird. It's definitely strange. But, uh, you know, my, I know. My neighbor we're... was three months oh. and counting. Man, With still... no taste or smell? Correct. Man. Was and he he's... a vaxxer, anti vaxxer? What he was, which size? Um, that I don't know. It was a. Yeah. It was a. It was three months ago that I talked to him and I ran into him and I didn't ask him that. And he's like, I'm getting to the point where, uh oh, is this ever going to come back? Yeah, it's horrifying because it feels weird. It feels like it never will. But yeah, I, uh, everything I've uh, dealt with so far. Look, if you're one of those people that's having uh, a little trouble sleeping or you don't feel like you're sleeping like you used to, 
I, I, and you've got the shot. I'll be responsible and say, and you've got the say, vaccine. Here we go. And, you, and, go. and you've got the vaccine. Go get this thing. Dr. Go get Omer. this COVID. <laughs> go, go grab a big old pile of COVID and shove it in if you're vaccinated. Because the sleep that I had is, is the best sleep I've had. So remember when you were a teenager and people couldn't wake you? Like they'd try to wake you. Could you could take a calendar to bed. You, 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 oh, my God. You, yeah, exactly. You wake up with a beard. It's amazing. <laughs> it is the best sleep i have ever had as an adult so if you've got the vaccine go lick doorknobs breathe on everything <laughs> suck in anything anyone does get that close talker at work that spits uh get all up in their face anything you can do to get this because it is only if you've got the vaccine if you're a non-vax person don't get arrogant and start thinking i'm telling you anything but uh, i'm pretty convinced that the shot made it so this was nothing uh, even the doctor I talked to was like, if you're vaccinated, this will be a walk in the park because uh, you're young and healthy. And everything. I'm like, OK, that's good enough. And uh, so it was great. But yeah, the sleep was that Wednesday to Thursday was about 17 hours or Thursday to Friday, I guess. But 17 hours. Yeah. And uh, and I it, like if you came and shook me, I wouldn't. Have, I, I, people would have thought I was dead. It was crazy. And you get left alone. Food shows up at your door. Uh, it's kind of my dream world. It's sort of the greatest thing ever. If it if it wasn't for like you can't like anybody that says anything to you is like sorry COVID. Uh, I got a text from a guy who drops off uh, these meals to the house. You got to get those for you. Oh no, see I got COVID. And they're like oh all right, and that guy tends to chat a little bit. It dodged it. Like it's been it's been pretty great to be honest with you. I've I've enjoyed my time with it quite a bit, and it's very short. I hate to see it go so quickly. <laughs> But, uh, you know, when it comes to work, mucking up my entire house and dumping stuff off at the door, uh, that part stinks. <laughs> it's you like know. your taste of retirement. It was a little bit of that. You know, the only thing missing from this is Barry Manilow's weekend in New England, uh, me and my, my beautiful farmhouse in, in a glorious New yeah. Hampshire, <laughs> and uh, just up there and, and living the dream in New Hampshire at the farm. And what I picture myself in sort of a rust-colored turtleneck and a pair of jeans and some some outdoor shoes because it's probably a little muddy, crisp air, and nobody for miles. It's uh, everything I've ever wanted, just to sit and have a small fire and just sit next to the fire in New Hampshire and, and pretend like life is COVID-friendly. And it was, yeah, I, I have no complaints. Now, that's my experience. I know we'll get emails from people who are like, my brother's best friend's aunt you had a horrible 10 months. Yep, sorry about that. Mine wasn't. <laughs> Mine was pretty, uh, pretty great. I got stuffy. I got nervous, and that was the worst of it. And then the sleep thing had me a little scared. That was strange because it did feel like you weren't going to ever wake up again. Like when you, I, I couldn't stay conscious. Uh, Thursday to Friday was my inability to stay awake at all was crazy. Uh, but somebody keeps, I just got an email that said, the best indicator of smell improvement is fresh ground coffee beans. Uh, you get ground, fresh ground coffee beans, and they'll start to, you'll start to notice when you can come back. And when well, that's a scent that you like anyway. Everybody likes the smell of fresh ground coffee beans. That's a, it's lovely. So, yeah, but my, I can't smell a thing. My first uh, scent coming back, coming off the uh, was COVID your stew, right? Was my own witch's brew. Oh, <laughs> well, you spent so and much I, time it, with those. It was <laughs> tears of joy, Brett. Yeah, I'm like, oh yeah. my god, I can smell. As opposed to the normal tears, which is just burning the air out of the room. Ooh, that's a good yeah. one. Yeah, three or four times a day, you had a chance you were going to smell your own feces. Yeah, because you pooped so much. And it finally happened. Oh, I went I'm outside. So happy. I was going to take a picture of it. My uh, three-legged pit bull Yardley takes man-sized poops. I mean, man-sized, and she's only about fifty pounds. She's not big, but I mean, these dumps. I, Brady, you would triple flush this thing. It's huge. And I, uh, it was Saturday afternoon. I, I going to take a picture. I, I couldn't get a good picture. And I'm laying on the ground out in the back. Just she put one right on the rocks, on decorative rocks and grass. So it was kind of hanging hanging off the edge. And I laid next to it, and just my nose was within, I don't know, tenth of an inch of this pile. Oh, you were buried I, um, in the video. Does. Yeah. Oh, Yardley lays next to me and her ass is always right in my face. And I'm on the couch last night and I'm just hearing all I could hear is <laughs> 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 just blowing heat straight out the bee hole. And, <laughs> and I'm like, man, this normally would be awful because her farts put Brady's to shame. 
And I, I sent a video of you guys. I'm just laying there taking it. And I can put my nose right up next to that ass. I don't think you guys could hear her. She's one of those. Not like mom farts. Every once in a while she makes some noise. But the, but the, it's just fresh air. And it's hot. Kind of like the hot but air she, balloon when they're pulling on that cord there. Yeah, she, uh, she just puts her butt right next to my face. And uh, I could smell it. I just I decided to take a video of it. So I got nose deep in that thing. Nothing. And so I don't smell farts. I don't. Just warm have, air. It's great. Yeah. And, you know, just the noise, which made me laugh because I'm like, ain't going to bother me. <laughs> it, it, it don't care. Breathing in all the toxins, none of it mattered. So it's, uh, it's definitely a strange experience, this COVID. But, uh, and mainly because the way people act. And, uh, you know, and also, everybody's got a story, which is great at this point, you know, because I'm late to the party, but everybody's got a story. And uh, nobody wants to hear that you're doing okay. Uh, deep down, everybody, uh, my, uh, Jim Sharp, who works at KTAR, who lost his father to COVID, texted me and he said, uh, how are you? And I said, surprisingly well, uh, you know, nothing. I said, I'm, I'm, I'm shot up, so I'll probably walk through this pretty easily. Uh, all indicators are that I just have a stuffy nose and we'll see what goes on. And uh, I said, but to be honest with you, I feel great and I'm sleeping better than I've ever slept. And he said, uh, and told him, I said, this is pretty good. And he said, the last thing my dad said before we took him to the hospital day before was that he felt great and that everybody should get COVID. Oh, thanks. And then he passed. And I'm like, well, thanks. For, thanks. I said, that is the single wettest <laughs> no. blanket anyone has ever <laughs> yeah, thrown on me ever. And it's like the one guy, you know, is dead. And he said the same thing. You know why? Because you're like, being cocky about it, John. <laughs> yeah. I'm going in with my attitude, my fists up. I'm, I'm balled up and ready to fight back. I was like, all right, well, thanks a lot for checking in with me. What an uplifting message that was. <laughs> Plus, Prepare for I death. Think, yeah, Jim's dad, you know, very old man as well. So, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm I, sorry for him to do that. You don't tell somebody. He's like, yeah, I don't know what's going on. And uh, here's, the, uh, here's the last guy I knew, and he's dead now. He said what you're saying. He did what you did. It's like, okay. And I must have gotten 10 or 11 of those. And people on emails were really super nice, but a lot of them checking in and saying nice things. But I got, you know. 14, and again, all the people that kept saying, I thought you got vaccinated. How come you have it? I'm like, man, nobody understands this. The, the messaging for what a vaccine does is just, it is, it's exhausting to try to say, you can still catch it with the vaccine. However, the symptoms are less and it definitely, it, um, look, if you're an anti-vax person, that's fine, but. Yeah, and that's where it doesn't kick in for them. Oh, that's a waste of time then to get the vaccine. Uh, man, well, you know, right. They, they go they the other still way and then the other ones are saying. Uh, you don't get it the same. Yeah. That's for sure. Because Thomas, our friend Thomas, eight weeks without taste or smell. He was in the hospital for 10 days. Uh, and he's and I'm like, would you get the shot? Hell no, I wouldn't get that shot. It's the, the anti-vax shot. You know what that is? That's needle Nazis. And I'm like, oh, God, here we go. <laughs> that's the new one I've been hearing that's a lot. That's needle Nazis. <laughs> they, they want to tell you that kind of stuff so, that, so you'll, you'll take all their shots. What, what, I mean, where does it end, Johnny? Where does it end? Like, that's probably true. You know what they've got is this egg that hatches and synthetic parasites grow inside your body. It's a science fiction nightmare. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm glad you're better. He's passionate. We need, we need to go have dinner sometime, Johnny. And I'm like, absolutely we do. The one thing that's great is that uh, my, my phone knows that I have it because all my stories, all my stories <laughs> are about uh, COVID. And the first thing I opened today Yahoo's uh, or is a New York Times story that says uh, podca on podcasts and radio misleading COVID-19 talk goes unchecked while radio hosts die. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's the story that I get this morning. Uh, and then you click off of it. And the next story is bad COVID-19 info spreads. Radio hosts die. And then Marilyn Manson is uh, locking women in small soundproof glass enclosures. But uh, those are my stories today is all about how. This, uh, I don't know what he is, a religious radio host? Yeah, that guy, he, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, he spread uh, pastor, like ter I think. terrible information about things. Just, I mean, again, he's, he's the one who's spreading the info that it's uh, an egg that they're giving you. You that, know the term uh, he uses a lot? No. Needle Nazis. N needle Nazis. You can't have this stuff, Toledo. You can't have these needle Nazis running about, running amok, shoving eggs in our bodies. <laughs> but I hope you get better, Johnny. I'm glad you got the shot. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's in. Uh, yeah, is he a needle Nazi guy? I haven't read that one. I don't know that guy's name. I just see a picture. I, just, I don't even know if, uh, Ro- it too. if Rogan had him on yet, but uh, Rogan's, uh, you know, has gone away from COVID now to uh, bragging about how flexible he is. Yeah, he can blow himself. Yeah. Oh, which <laughs> all right again, then. again. I struggle with anybody saying I won't put that in my body and then but, going on and saying, but I can blow myself. I can put my crank in my mouth. Yeah, I, I'm not going to take any shot. I'll tell you that. I, I'm very careful with what I put in my body. Watch this. He is very flexible. I've seen pictures of Joe Rogan doing the splits and stuff. but And I don't believe any man that says they can do that and uh, aren't currently doing it. Because I know if I could do it, I wouldn't be talking to you idiots. <laughs> Never leave the uh, house again. Oh, this is good stuff. The Christian media outlet founded by the guy, uh, Wiles is his name. I don't know his first name. But this was another thing. Uh, headline, uh, Jew coup describes effort to impeach Donald Trump. <laughs> I, knew Brett would, I knew Brett would enjoy it. But that's, that's how fast that went from dude doesn't like the vaccine to here's another thing he said once. There's a Jew coup. <laughs> they happen all the time. Uh, yeah, the Jukus are everywhere. I was there's a Juku every Saturday over by Granada Park where I live because they're out and running all over. <laughs> they say take over Granada Park because everybody's like, "What's going on? Is, like, is there a uniform or a requirement?" I tell you, Johnny, it's the needle Nazis. The freedom's over. It's over. They've taken it. So if you've got like me, if you had the magic eggs that hatch uh, all sorts of nonsense, and the one thing that the needle Nazis did do, and I can say this now with experience under my belt. Uh, whatever this uh, nanobot or egg that's living inside of me that's going to cause me to be a drone or a slave for the future, it kicked that COVID right out of me. So I feel fine. And so I'll take the, I'll take the fact that I didn't have to go to a hospital or I can breathe. I can actually still work out. Uh, I don't have any of the lung stuff. So it's all good. We've had some I, again, people messaging in on Facebook asking how Megan is and everything else. So she's everybody good. around you guys are all good. Yeah, yeah. Every yeah, everybody good. everybody is tested negative. So uh, and and the home tests, which are the same tests I got when I got uh, my surgery, the exact same box. They opened the box in front of me uh, for my COVID test when I got my surgery, um, and everybody says, "Oh, those home tests are unreliable." When I got a negative last Monday, uh, it. I, you know, that's why I came to work. I, I missed last Monday because I didn't. I had congestion and runny nose and sore throat. I'm like, I better not go in. Took the test, came out negative. Must be allergies. Came in Tuesday and Wednesday. And then Wednesday, when I lost my sense of smell, which was the strangest thing that happened in like 10 minutes from being able to smell everything to not having any at all. And then I took the test again, and it was positive. But everybody wants to tell you that they're unreliable when they're negative. I, even Larry was like, you took... A home test, and it said you were negative? I'm like, right. And now you're positive? I'm like, same exact home test. So you're only taking, like, one of the <laughs> results seriously. Right. So either they work or they you can't pick and choose, but everybody picks and chooses. It's the strangest. And like, I, I every, was that Nobody way. knows how to behave. I was that way when I was getting tested after the fact that kept coming up positive. These things aren't reliable. Right. Even going Because you don't the, like uh, the answer. I know. Yeah, people don't like the answer. So they make the test the problem. And the problem with the home tests, because uh, there's uh, some stuff you have to follow. There's some details you have to go and actually follow, is that most people that I've met, at the very least, are stupid. So they're going to have a problem with the little science experiment that you got to do in your kitchen when you do a home test, which includes you know, making sure you only get six drops in the little thing. And it even says, any more, and it's, it's a tainted test. Uh, not to touch the Q-tip in the wrong way, uh, swabbing your nose properly. I and mean, there's all sorts of different things that they, the, the medical professionals are going to say, don't do it at home. You guys are – what they're saying is you're too stupid and you're just yeah. going to cause more trouble you thinking you know. Right. You, you're, you will not do this right. And, and frankly, they're right. Like I probably did the first one. I've, I'm, I'm an expert now. I've, t- I've probably taken nine of them. And I don't know the difference between – like people are like, oh, you got to wait three days. I'm like, why? I can take one every couple hours if I want to. Can you Amazon Prime those tests? Uh, so you, like, you, you're taking nine. Did you just get a gross of them? Oh, we got a load of them. I think that's just what Larry did. He, he Amazoned yeah. his over. Wait a minute. Larry's yeah. bitching about the home test and yeah. he bought and them? Oh, yeah, bought yeah. Them. He, took them. Ah, he took two he's this weekend. Bitching. He's not bitching. He's just got constant questions. Because uh, he's neurotic. And he's neurotic. He's It's a Juku is what it is. <laughs> 
<laughs> you can't have Larry and not have a Jew coup when it comes to these home tests. Are you kidding me? It's the damn needle Nazis. There's nothing it's we can do. It's these sticks. It. Well, I, I got it right on time. I got it with Ben Roethlisberger, which is good. And evidently, all the Cardinals had the eggs hatch inside them, the vaccinated ones yesterday, because we're, they were too busy listening to their overlord's mental instructions than they were to play football yesterday. That was, Jeez. Has wow. there ever been, have, at this point in the season, has there ever been less watchable football? Oh, my God. Two weeks in a row. Yeah. Terrible. Two it's just, it is, the product is garbage. I watched that steaming pile of feces Steelers game that was just. Nobody wanted that game, John. It became it comical after a terrible football. And then I turned it over to the Cardinals, and they are playing absolutely awful football. And then you watch the Seahawks and the Packers. I'm like, okay, here's a good game. Russell's back. Absolutely horrible football game. And then last night's game was, it was it's just, this is early season stuff for teams that have kind of quit. The, the games are brutal. I don't like watching anything. So, yeah, the football's kind of letting us all down. I mean, the Dolphins win Thursday. It, nothing, and at this point, usually the cream is rising and the, uh, the, the, the teams that are falling off are falling off. I have a feeling, and I know I'm going to say this and make people very uncomfortable, because the only team playing with any consistency right now is the New England Patriots. Yep, I know. And they're the ones kind of catching their groove at the right time while everybody else flounders. So this could get, this could get really annoying to have the Brady-Belichick showdown start to face itself. Although they, they lost yesterday uh, to the, what are they called? The Washington the, football The Washington PRT. Gladiator Guardians. The Guardians of the uh, Guardian Ocean. I don't know who, what they are. The, the emailers. We'll call them the emailers. The Washington, hey, check out our naked cheerleaders. So <laughs> who knows what's going on. But yeah, football was... Uh, Enough to make you want the COVID, too. But highly recommended for everybody who's been vaccinated. And not one of those uh, Toledo vaccinations. Not that Johnson & Johnson gravy. I'm getting you gotta my get boosties yourself... today. Well, you have to. Are you getting a Johnson & Johnson boost? or are you getting the No, I'm one? getting Moderna. Good move. Does it count? Don't you have to have two Modernas to get boosty? No, no, no. If, if you have, no matter what you have originally, your boosty can be anything. No and kidding. They, and they say combining them makes you, uh, I don't know, bulletproof. Double eggs. Yeah, you get more eggs shoved in you. Yep. And here's and I'm telling you, man. All the once you get Nazis that, will be there today. Get that booster and start licking doorknobs. Just yep. because this is you have not slept like this in your life. I need some sleep. It's like I've taken sleeping pills in my life and it wasn't as effective as the sleep I got this weekend. It was magnificent. Uh, I, I, I'm breathing easy. Nothing stunk. You can fart and live in your own farts. It's just it's. Uh, I'm telling you, not so bad. Not so bad, so long as you're following all the rules. But if you're not vaccinated, your choice, stay away from it because it can still make your lungs pop out. Ask Jim Sharp. He won't talk about anything but that, even when he's trying to be nice to you. <laughs> but uh, to everybody who, who emailed over and all the nice things that people said, and sh- uh, some, oh, I forgot her name, but some lady emailed me over some concoction of vitamins. And, Is it uh, your sister? No. <laughs> no. My mom was worried, though. Oh, vitamin D, tonic, that, liquid zinc. Oh, I heard all this stuff. Loads of it. She had a whole recipe built up for what to put in there. And all I'm doing is just chugging vitamin C and diet Dr. Pepper. And this Coke Zero Cherry is about as good as it gets. So I probably had, no joke, I've, I've gone through about six, maybe five, five or six 12 packs of Coke Zero and uh, diet Dr. Pepper since Friday, which is, I, I also. Because you can say anything you want now, uh, as uh, you know, because we're all medical <laughs> professionals. I, I'm pretty sure it helps get rid of COVID. I think if you just guzzle soda, pretty sure that uh, now ends start COVID. stretching. <laughs> That's right. And talk to radio hosts. Uh, don't listen to doctors like that needle Nazi guy and Joe Rogan and all those. No. And if Rogan can blow himself, he does have some sort of a, I don't know, a power over me to. I'm going to listen to that guy. Is what I'm saying. Like he's he's capable. So I'm going to listen to that. But, yeah, get the shot, lick a doorknob. That's my Christmas wish for all of you. Uh, in the meantime, uh, let's get ourselves a wake-up song, shall we? A good one. 585-9800. Uh, Brett will take care of those right there. You can throw them on Facebook. Get all of your needs met for the wake-up song, and we'll scream it together, I suppose. It's 98 KUPD. Wake up! Hey, it's not weird. It's pretty cool, actually. No membership fee. I have heard enough of this. 
You've been listening to Holmberg's Morning Sickness Podcast, brought to you by our friends at Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meet, mesquite, repeat, ericsfamilybbq.com.